The rule of law seems to be collapsing around us in real time, my friends. Remember that mad with power judge, McCann, who oversaw the Trump hush money trial? Well, he's now ruled that the gag order that he held over Trump during the kangaroo court trial in New York City is now, in fact, going to be kept in place despite the trial have, having already been completed. Now, I'm no lawyer, but after several hours of researching this, I couldn't find any other example of this actually happening here in the United States. Our freedom of speech has been historically sacrosanct, something that we have revered and guarded with jealousy over the centuries. But now, thanks in no small part to the rise of the socialist woke mind virus, the war against freedom of speech and freedom in general appears to be reaching a fevered pitch. Gone is the pretense of doing these things because they have the moral high ground, the radical left. No, the mask is now off. It's all about gathering power with the inevitable intention of wielding it against anyone who is not them. Then they don't seem to care who now knows it. To put this in better context, I'm going to pull up an article from Fox News. This is titled, Legal Experts Say Gag Order in Trump Case is Untethered to Rationale After Court Order. This is by Brianna Hurley. She writes, A New York appeals court on Tuesday kept in place a gag order on former President Trump who asked the court to lift the ban on his speech after the recent guilty verdict in his unprecedented criminal trial. Now that the trial has concluded and the former president and presumptive GOP nominee in the 2024 presidential election await sentencing next month, experts say the gag order which Judge Juan Mercan has refused to lift is, quote, untethered from any compelling rationale. Jonathan Turley, practicing defense attorney and law professor, told Fox News Digital that you have a local New York judge effectively limiting what the lead presidential candidate can say in the months leading up to an election. The continuation of the gag order seems untethered from any compelling rationale, particularly in light of the election. Turley went on to note that the appellate courts are generally highly deferential to courtroom management type issues like the imposition and continuation of gag orders, but he said it is deeply concerning that Judge McCann would continue a gag order long after the verdict has been reached and the jury dismissed the case. Putting aside the questionable value of the continuation of the gag order, in this case, Judge McCann is ignoring the countervailing cost for the political system. Now, why are we pretending that the judge cares about the costs for the political system here? Everything that has been done by this judge has been a mockery of both the political and the legal system. You see, to tyrannical leftists and socialists, they only care about one thing, and that is power and their ability to dominate anyone and everyone who doesn't do as they say. They just need to remain in control a little bit longer to reach their aims. And what is their aim? What is their short-term goal? Amnesty. If they can just maintain control long enough to make that a reality, then the American people can be simply overwhelmed and overridden by millions of new citizens. Citizens who do not care about America as it was founded. Citizens who will vote for the party that gives them the stuff. The play Santa Claus. Anyway, the article goes on to write that the New York Court of Appeals on Tuesday rejected Trump's bid to have the gag order against him lifted, citing that no substantial constitution question is directly involved. And again... Is anyone surprised by this? Who cares about the Constitution, these guys say? Who cares about freedom of speech? These people don't like the way the country is founded. They would love to get rid of that. Now, the article goes on to write that Trump's lawyer cited the November presidential election and the first debate against President Trump later this month, as well as the First Amendment rights of the former president and his supporters as reasons for the order to be lifted. The former president was found guilty on all 34 counts, blah, 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 blah. Trump campaign spokesperson said in a statement that President Trump and his legal team will continue to fight against the unconstitutional gag order imposed by Justice McCann. The gag order wrongfully silences the leading candidate for president of the United States, President Trump, at the height of his campaign. The gag order applies only to President Trump and not to any of his political opponents, critics, or even crooked Joe Biden. Now, let's talk about some legal and historical context here. Gag orders are typically issued to prevent prejudicial publicity that could undermine the defendant's right to a fair trial by an impartial jury. The primary purpose, then, is to protect the integrity of the judicial proceedings while the trial is ongoing. But once a trial concludes, the primary justification for such a gag order, preventing commentary that could taint the jury pool, well, that's gone. So what are we doing here? 
the very idea that this has been kept in place, this is beyond dangerous. It is breaking the very foundation of this country. If they can just on a whim discard the Constitution for a former president and his right to free speech, then everyone is at risk here. Then freedom of speech doesn't matter. They just need to accuse you of something, put you on a gag order, and you're done. So much for freedom of speech. And there is something else that needs to be considered here. And which I believe is directly related to not only this immediate situation with Donald Trump and the gag order, but future events that have yet to unfold this year. If you've been paying attention, you might have noticed that there has been an ever increasing, ever louder set of attacks on the Supreme Court itself. There's been an attempt to smear and intimidate three of the justices, and they are growing ever louder. The radical leftists here want to be able to rule with impunity, and the Supreme Court is one of the last few bulwarks against their mad quest for control. I want to pull up an article from The Hill. They talk about this. Uh, this article is titled, Illegal Recording Plunges Supreme Court into Deeper Controversy. This is by Alexander Bolton. He writes, The secret recording of conservative Justice Samuel Alito endorsing the idea that the country should return to a place of, quote, godliness, has further plunged the Supreme Court into controversy, evoking outrage from Senate Democrats and forcing Republicans to play defense. Why would this even be something to be defensive about? Moral corruption in the U.S. is f is reaching fevered pitch, leading to rampant drug use, crime, and unending violence. Maybe this country really could use a dose of so-called godliness, if you ask me. Now, the article goes on to write that Senate Democrats are firing off new salvos of criticism at Alito and at Chief Justice John Roberts for not reining in his conservative colleague after he appeared to endorse the idea that the nation should embrace Christian principles and failed to distance himself from his wife's outspoken hostility to a neighbor's gay pride flag. Senator Elizabeth Warren, the Pocahontas lady decided that she would weigh in on this, and she said, Alito is an extremist who is out of touch with mainstream America. His rising power on the Supreme Court is a threat to our democracy. Warren, the article writes, is one of many Democrats who think Alito is bringing a partisan political agenda to the bench, and they are highlighting it whenever they can ahead of November's election. Warren said, I am concerned about the appearance that Justice Alito has pre prejudged cases that will come before him. That is one of the biggest sins that a judge or justice can commit, and his willingness to align so publicly in the middle of a hotly contested political battle is deeply worrisome. It undermines whatever last shreds of credibility the Supreme Court might have had. Now what a crock of People like Warren have been trying and have tried and have indeed done so put into the legal system as many political activists disguised as judges as they possibly can. She's just mad that these judges are standing in the way of getting what she desires most, the destroying of this country and remaking it in her own image. It still amazes me that we pretend that this is anything other than what it is. The idea that she cares about political activism... What a joke. What this boils down to is this. The left is panicked that up until now, they have failed to be able to bully the Supreme Court into backing their attempt at taking over the country and destroying Trump. They want to install one party rule and they can't stand that the Supreme Court is standing in their way. So they are sharpening their knives with the intention of taking out the Supreme Court justice. They want a few scalps here and will they will do whatever they can to get them. They have gone after Justice Alito and Justice Clarence Thomas, trying to smear them and either force them to recuse themselves from ruling on Trump cases, or perhaps maybe even one day get them removed from the court itself. And it doesn't stop with these two conservative justices. They are also trying to bully Chief Justice John Roberts as well. They want him to recuse himself from the upcoming immunity ruling involving President Trump and the so-called ethics reform argument that the radical left is pushing. You see, two top Senate Democrats tried to get Roberts into a private meeting. They were hoping to get Roberts to force Justice Alito off of the Trump case. They desperately want to influence the rulings here. And I don't see them letting up anytime soon. But don't worry, my friends. The stakes here are only enormous and only involve the very fabric of our country and what it's always been. I believe that the insanity that we are witnessing is only going to intensify as the weeks and the months melt away and we get closer to the November election. So buckle up, my friends. This ride is going to get really bumpy from here on out.
take that to the bank. From the To Be Frank show, I am Adrian. Thanks for watching, my friends. As always, I will see you all in the next video.